Hello, hello. Welcome to Crazy Games. We are back in Genshin Impact, and... Um, there's like this event right now. The Shadows of Mist Snowstorm event, and um... I thought that was already it was already done because of the two parts, and uh, it seemed like the last part of this like wrapped up the story pretty well since there was like a boss fight, which was like a good climax, and a bit of a conclusion with like a cool cutscene with Albedo and stuff. But apparently, if I go to quest here, there's one more part. I am thinking this is probably just like um, a short, I don't know, dialogue, a bunch of dialogue and interactions between characters just to like kind of um, settle things a little bit more maybe <laughs> or maybe even like set things up for the next like story that's going to be coming or kind of like hint at certain things maybe for albedo or maybe even for like other stories in the future but yeah let's um let's uh do it let's go check things out uh i would be in campsite I'll just teleport there. <laughs> um, so yeah, in the last video I did with this uh, story uh, quest, I, I was like under the impression that, uh, was it, Joel was kidnapped by the fake albedo. But uh, I was completely wrong when I was, <laughs> when I was looking at the footage that I've um, recorded. It's actually like st specifically stated by Eola that she saw Elbido like trying to like run away with Joel and then when she confronted the that Elbido, I guess the the suspicious um imposter Elbido, that he like panicked and like pushed Joel aside to like try and like get away. And uh Yula saw seeing that like chased after him. So yeah, like, Joel was not actually kidnapped. <laughs> Even though I think I made a big deal about it in my last video. And that's only because I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Traffic. what do we got here? Paimon, I suppose your story is ready. Yep. Oh, right. How about you? Uh, do you need some more time? I guess we did um, promise that we would tell each other some like cool stories in the last video. So yeah, we're going to find out what uh, stories we're going to tell each other. No need. I am also ready to tell my story. Paimon calls the Paimon first! Please, go ahead. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, there was an evil researcher who went into the mountains and did a crazy experiment on whopper flowers to transform their appearance. After a lot of pain and suffering, the whopper flowers finally took on a human form. Then they stood by the side of the mountain to wait for unsuspecting bypassers. Ooh. To whoever spoke to them, they would ask some questions such as, Who am I? Who are you? Oh, we should have been um, sitting by a campfire or something in the dark. <laughs> And it's a little bit weird that in this shot, um, Albedo's, like, alchemy thingy is, like, blocking the view to Lumine. <laughs> I don't know if this is intentional or not. If the bypasser got the wrong answer, the last sound they'd make would be a yelp before the whopper flower ate them alive in one bite. Oh my god. He's gonna oh, eat truly them. Truly frightening. He's gonna eat them. And then they're gonna eat me. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, Paimon is truly frightening. What the? You two aren't scared at all! Maybe I'm just really tough, I don't know. Don't go nitpicking, okay? <laughs> if you didn't like the story, go write your own! That's what I, I kept doing. This It's almost as if like Paimon is like speaking to me directly as a player of the game, because... The only thing I do in this like YouTube channel is nitpick all the dumb things, uh, this uh, like all the little story like plot holes and stuff that I don't understand about this story, and a lot of the times it's because I actually like miss something and it's like my something that like I made a mistake on. <laughs> so yeah, oh man, Paimon, don't do this to me. It's not my fault. I try my best. <laughs> oh, in that case, I would add some horror elements in dot dot dot. After the Whopper Flowers eat someone, they turn into that person. Dun dun dun! Uh, sure. In other words, 
the Whopper flowers would ambush and then completely replace their victims. And then adopt their new found identity. That's exactly the the plot story too. Um, the uh, the something invasion of the body snatchers or something. It's like a really old movie. <laughs> and then what? Go back to where the person lives? Enter their home? Eat their whole family? Ah! Uh, Paima made up this story, but now Paimon's the one who's scared by it. It's a good story. May I write it down? I may bring it up in future conversations. What for? Just to scare people with? Yes. You've got a real mean streak, Albedo. So what's your story, Albedo? Mine is a little longer than yours. It starts with an alchemist. A great alchemist once created Subject One. Subject One was her proudest achievement and successfully blended into human society. No one ever would have thought that this friend of theirs was in fact a synthetic human. However, unbeknownst to Subject One, the Alchemist had tried the same experiment many times before he had come into being. Some of the rejects from failed experiments had been discarded, but had not died. Oh my god. Subject Two was one such failed experiment. He was swallowed by a great dragon that came to rest upon a snow-swept mountain. Many years later, he was resurrected by the dragon's mysterious power. Whoa, okay. So he's pretty much telling the story of himself? Or the, the Whopper Flower? Or whatever that other albedo. Because apparently, like, we think uh, the imposter albedo has been finally, like rid of we've we've been rid of him since we destroyed him as like the whopper flower but apparently there's like another albedo walking around we don't know if it's like another whopper flower that's taking form or if it's actually like another like um synthetic human that just um that has like nothing to do with whopper flowers it's just that it just so happens that coincidentally there's this albedo with the neck scar there's like a different albedo looking person without the next scar and then there's also like whopper flowers who like to mimic um humans or something like that i don't know i actually don't understand that part of the story all too well i think it that part is like specifically or not specifically but it's like designed or written that way to be a little bit vague um for us to kind of like have a little fun trying to like theorize about things so yeah <laughs> But the thing is, the way Albedo was talking about this story, Subject 1 was like the best thing, but then Subject 2 is the failed experiment. But then um, he was suggesting that it took the alchemist many tries to finally uh, perfect the thing to make Subject 1. So shouldn't that be like flipped around, whereas Subject 1 is like the one that's almost there, and then Subject 2 is the one that finally has been perf perfected or are they saying like um this alchemist experimented a lot and created many test subjects that were failures until uh this alchemist made subject one which was perfect and they're like wow i made subject one this perfect i could probably repeat this and do it again and then when this uh, alchemist decide to do it again it would and made subject to this for whatever reason he wasn't able to perfect this one and then now there's like another fail experiment specifically named subject two <laughs> okay and yeah the uh, dragon that is being um referred to here is durin which is like the dead body that we see with like that blink that that, that that that's like dead here in the dragon spine mountains and there's like that glowing creepy like red heart thing in the mountain that's like supposed to be like durin's heart that's like constantly leaking out some sort of a uh, dragon corruption of some kind that's like making people crazy so apparently that power resurrected um why would the dragon eat subject two though hmm what was like the dragon because the dragon was also created by the the alchemist um something doter <laughs> the actual like the character that albedo is referring to like his um mother i guess you can think of actually created that dragon too so it's like the dragon's supposed to be some sort of like 
trash collector that um, eats all the failed experiments <laughs> just to clean things up so they don't have like all these like failed experiments running around <laughs> the that that character specifically made a dragon to do that <laughs> but for whatever reason subject 2 was able to survive in uh, the great dragon's body or not survive but maybe died and then got brought back to life i don't know he saw all kinds of people on the mountain including subject 1 who had somehow miraculously blended in among them. Never in subject to his wildest imagination had he thought it possible for experimental life forms such as they to deceive everyone so successfully. He saw the way humans accepted subject one as a friend, witnessed their affection as they addressed him by name. This was what subject two wanted. Now, all that Subject 2 desired was to replace Subject 1 and take the joy of his existence for himself. I feel like they're like trying to poke at like real life here. I don't know. Like a lot of people kind of see other people that they maybe idolize or they envy or they um, compare themselves to in one way or another and they want to like have what they have. So then they do all these like things to try and get what 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 uh, the other people have, their idol or whatever. But then when really, if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you don't you you don't really have like a purpose. I guess you're constantly like you're never gonna be good enough, or you're since you're not that person, like you you haven't gone through what that person has gone through to kind of like earn all the things that person has gotten in his or her life and uh you just want to like have all that without putting the work into it kind of thing and uh the work you do do is kind of like misplaced and um doesn't really reach anything when what uh subject two here should be doing is um trying to do the same thing that subject one did right where subject one took the risk and um went out there interacted with humans and hopefully they don't like uh, discriminate against him and uh, because of his um, I don't know <laughs> his own personalities his own like actions and behaviors and how how he treats all the people in his life he gains like the respect and friendship and everything around him and uh, instead of like specifically trying to replace that the subject too should try and like uh, use subject one as a role model and be like, oh, I'm also synthetic, but if he was synthetic and was able to accomplish all these things, then I should be able to do that too. So then instead of like killing or whatever or replacing the existence of subject one, just be the be yourself and um, take your own risks and uh, I don't know, try things your own way or whatever in order to really like stand out. And, um, what if, like, I guess if, like, Subject 1 gets all this, like, affection and, uh, relationships and stuff by the way Subject 1 reacts, but then Subject 2, like, for whatever reason, does is not lucky enough, maybe? Because there is sometimes luck involved when it comes to making friends. And it's, it, maybe then they'll become resentful, I don't know. <laughs> I guess things can go in many ways when, uh, you, you're talking about how, like, um relationships form and friendships form and uh, how people interact with other people based on what they know or don't know about each other <laughs> anyways uh let's continue uh, this is giving paimon the chills so scary subject two began to unfold his plan he stole subject one's books and notes and studied all that Subject 1 had learned from the Alchemist. Subject 2 was highly intelligent, and he learned quickly. He changed his face into an exact replica of Subject 1's face. Then, he found a plant with mimicry capabilities, and transformed it using dragon blood and alchemy. The what? Dot dot dot. And so, not only did Subject 2 transform his own appearance to perfectly match that of Subject 1, he also created a third entity, Subject 3. <gasps> what? There's three of them now? Huh. 
Oh my god. But subject 2 wanted to become a perfected human. So, he erased a mark in both his and Subject 3's necks. For these marks were symbols of imperfection. He purposely erased it? That's really funny that um, Subject 2 would think marks are symbols of imperfection when, like, people in general, there's really no such thing as, like, a perfect human. <laughs> there's always, like, one uh, trait is advantages or disadvantage in certain like situations <laughs> and uh yeah you can't really know um i guess there are some traits that oh, i don't know this is hard to like explain like if you're big and strong sure you can like win fights and uh get mates and stuff but uh you also require a lot more um calories and resources to sustain yourself whereas like a smaller person might not be able to to compete in that sense they can like maybe outlast or survive other ways i don't know <laughs> so yeah i guess uh imperfection is kind of subjective <laughs> you kind of have to see what fits um your environment <laughs> and there's like a lot of people who like uniqueness right like oh you got this like cool scar or you got like this interesting birthmark or you're you, I don't know, you you talk a funny way and uh, people are interested in that or you have a funny personality or something. Like uniqueness is in, in some way like um, favorable in, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he purposely erased it. What, what an idiot. In my view, it was probably a subconscious act, an instinct. Ah, okay. He so desperately craved to become a perfect human being that he forgot something. Human beings are defined by their flaws. I wouldn't say human beings are defined by their flaws, but that is like what I what I was trying to say, kind of. <laughs> Maybe defined by their uniqueness? Not really. Human beings are more defined by their purpose and their meaning and their motivations, right? That's what they were going into with like the vision and uh, people's like motivations and ambitions is what gives them, if they have a strong enough uh, ambition they the gods reward them reward would that be a right word or they the gods like give them a vision so that they have more uh, means to accomplish their goals yeah <laughs> humans are defined by their curiosity and their goals and <laughs> their uh i'm trying to sound smart but really i'm not so <laughs> let's just continue subject two's plan was meticulously crafted subject three would draw subject one's attention after Subject 1 disposed of Subject 3, he would assume the threat had now disappeared and would let his guard down. The next moment that Subject 1 was alone, Subject 2 would make his move. He would eliminate Subject 1 and become the only one remaining. He would secretly replace the Subject 1 of everyone's memories and inherit his identity, residence, clothing, sword, name, and friends, people would have no idea that the individual they knew had become somebody else from one day to the next. Uh, uh, this is way too scary. Hyman's never gonna be able to trust anyone again. But just before Subject 2 could carry out his plan, a unique stranger entered the mix. Subject 2 tried to make contact with this person but found that they could somehow sense he was different from Subject 1. <sighs> what? Dot. Dot. What's wrong? Are you scared? Uh, yeah. What happened then? What happened to the stranger? He became a new stage in Subject 2's plan. One more person that Subject 2 had to dispose of. Uh-oh. It's as if there were three identical roses in the garden. Only one of the three was a fine specimen while the other two were defective specimens that bore poisonous thorns. In all the world, only the gardener who tended to them could tell which was the good specimen. People do not like poisonous plants. Only a perfect rose can fetch a high price. If the inferior specimens wanted to conceal the fact of their worthlessness, they would have to take the gardener out of the picture using their poisonous thorns. 
Oh my gosh. This is exactly what Subject 2 was thinking. So, he hid in the shadows and waited patiently. Maybe soon, he would get his chance to become truly human. This is not just a story. These are real events. Albedo is trying to tell me the cruel and unbelievable <sighs> truth. That was intense! So what happened after that? Did Subject 2's plan succeed? Oh, uh, Paimon can't bear thinking about it! Fortunately, Meta is just a story. And even in this story, Subject 2 did not succeed. But... You can never let your guard down on Dragonspine. Monsters mutated with Durant's power and blood are also creatures of Rhine Daughter, just like me. You must beware of all such creatures. That's the lady I was thinking about. Something Daughter, Rhine Daughter. <laughs> uh, don't say that. You're not a monster. You're my friend. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. It's okay. I know what I am. You and I are both different, so there is no need for me to hide the truth from you. Whoa, 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 the go only that far. thing <laughs> is that sometimes, when I think about how mighty the power of alchemy is, I feel so small. As beings who set foot in this world, how arrogant are we in desiring to control our destiny and in desiring to create? Is creation an arrogant act, Traveler? If not... Why do we call the ones that created us and control us gods? If it is, then what qualifies us to call ourselves creators? How far must we take our reverence and respect? And what purpose does it serve? How did you feel when you took out the imposter? We just changed the subject. Like he asks us a, a pretty like deep, profound question, and we're just like, oh, blah, blah, blah. how do you feel about how do you feel when you took out that the imposter? Um, yeah. <laughs> Nothing special, but whenever I think about it, I feel a twinge of grief. Poor Albedo. Hello, traveler. Are you here? Oh yeah. Hey, is that Amber? Thought we might find you here. We're here to deliver a message from Cyrus. There's going to be a big event down at the base camp, and they want you there too, Traveler. Winter camp is nearing its end. Apparently, even provisional instructors are required to attend. Looks like we need to go, Albedo. Bye for now. Then I won't keep you. I have some things to attend to here, so forgive me for not seeing you down. Don't worry about it. There have been no issues getting up and down the mountain recently. Is everyone ready? Let's not keep them waiting. Because, because, uh, Bennett's not with us. <laughs> A secret born from ashes started. Wait, what? Oh, wow. Okay, I thought it was just going to be a wrap-up, like, story. But then, like, finally, it says this story quest has started. <laughs> I guess I haven't really read this, have I? Um, I don't think this has changed, so let's read it now. A secret born, born, a secret born, <laughs> a secret born from ashes. Return to the adventurers' camp. You return to Dragonspine with your tail to meet Albedo at the encampment. The hitherto unknown secret may yet lie buried in this mysterious and perilous snowy mountain. And there's three more gems in this, so when we're done this, it will be done. There's no more sections after this. Uh, I should just teleport, shouldn't I? Oh, actually, I keep forgetting to do this, but I need to make sure to talk to, like, the people we leave. Just to see what they have to say. They may have, like, cool, like, hidden lore or information. <laughs> I think I missed talking to, um, Sleeping Bennett during that one time, which I was, like, kind of sad that... Uh, it happened, and unfortunately, there's no way to repeat these quests. Not even, like, regular story quests, where I can just go back. Like, re- re- uh, start the story quest or something, and then just specifically pick a checkpoint where I can, like, get the dialogue out of it. And it's kind of unfortunate that I would have to, like, make a completely new account and play through everything <laughs> in order to get to it. But yeah, anyway, 
I guess it, uh, for the majority of players, they're not going to really be going back to play um, story related stuff. They'll just maybe like watch a video or something. <laughs> Hopefully watch my videos. I don't know. Instead of like having to play it again. Anyway, Albedo, what do you have to say? Go ahead. You're one of their instructors, no? No, that's not very much. Give us more lore. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, ha. <laughs> All right. Look for the object. Oh. Huh? Who is this guy? Is he dot 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 Joel's father? What? A gigantic version of Joel. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know why, but I immediately thought, wasn't there like specific lore saying like Joel's father is like dead at the top of, or maybe somewhere in Dragon Spine? So, could this father possibly just be a, a, a one of those like enhanced whopper flowers with Durin's like cursed magic blood, and it's like taking the form of that like dead adventurer in order to come back as um as Joel's father? Since um like apparently those whopper flowers want to become human and be loved by people, so like in this case. Um, Joel wanting to find his father and uh, this Whopper Flower wanting people to love him is kind of like they kind of like work together synergistically and um, I don't know the little detail that <laughs> uh, it's a fake father maybe doesn't need to be um, um, revealed to them or to the kid and then they can kind of like continue their lives uh is it? Is he Joel's father? It'd be funny if it's not Joel's father. It's like Joel's like uncle or something. <laughs> Allow me to introduce Yozerf. He's Joel's father. Oh wait. Oh, okay. Dad, this is that traveler I was telling you about. The travelers helped me out loads in the past, and this time we even built a snowman together. Joel has told me everything about you. <laughs> I can't thank you enough. Where have you been all this time, Yozerf? <laughs> I'm glad you're finally reunited. Wow, this is amazing! Wait a second, why is Cyrus discreetly wiping tears away? And what is Pallet doing here? Yeah, gosh darn it, Pallet. Pallet is the hero of the hour this time. Go on, Pallet, tell us what happened in your own words. Okay. <clears throat> the weather was fine on that fateful day, and I had a feeling that Lady Luck was smiling down on me. So I trusted my god and set off to explore somewhere new, somewhere dangerous. Because where there is great danger, there is also great treasure. Uh, why does this sound so hard to believe? <laughs> I was about to say, no, I don't believe you. <laughs> but I wanted him to finish his voice line first, and then Paimon says it. Uh, I do feel like uh, Paimon does represent um, my... Uh, ideas of the story a lot of the time like the stuff i want to say <laughs> but i had only been away from the group for a short while when i fell down a slope and just started rolling gosh darn it pallid uh, oh did my bad luck rub off on him when we ran into each other on the Good. mountain the place i fell to was somewhere i didn't recognize and i'd sustained a few injuries i remember thinking to myself this is the worst luck i've ever had in my whole life uh... then i met yozerv He'd heard the sound of me falling and came out to see what was going on. Huh? Wow! So it was completely by chance then! I thought he must have been someone from the Adventurer's Guild here for the event, but after a few words of conversation, it was clear that he was having memory problems. He didn't even know his own name. <laughs> so yeah, my little, like, um, theory, I guess, hypothesis that he might actually be, uh, Whopper flower, an enhanced Whopper flower, might actually be the case here. The temperature was freezing, and there was no time to deal with all that there and then. So I convinced him to come back to the camp with me and figure everything else out after we got there. We got back to the camp, ran into Joel, and the moment he saw him, he froze for a second with this completely stunned expression on his face, and then he started crying out, Dad! Dad! That's when Yozerv suddenly started to remember. My memory has still not fully recovered, but Joel and his mother, they are the only ones that I will not know. 
that I cannot forget. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy's right here, Joel. Daddy's right here. How did you survive on the mountain for over a year? <laughs> I I don't know. I, for some reason, I I thought there was like confirmation that um Joel's dad has been like frozen to death or something on on uh, Dragon Spine Mountain, and, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I if it was just like a theory that I read or if it's actually like confirmed in the game. I like peruse the Genshin Impact subreddit so much that there's like all these people like giving their hypothesis and their their um, ideas of the story that I could like mix it up with like the actual lore and uh yeah hmm maybe I uh, I guess the more interesting story is that this is the Whopper Flower Mimicking since it kind of ties into the whole albedo and uh, uh the imposter albedo <laughs> I was gonna say suspicious albedo, like because uh, the uh, uh, Among Us keeps saying like, "Oh, that person's sus. That person's sus." But then it's like, uh, I guess they also like call you call um the fake um people uh, imposters as well. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, since uh we did like have that whole thing about Whopper flowers mimicking humans, it kind of connects to that. So like suddenly in introducing into the story uh joel's dad again it's like suspicious it's like oh does that have anything to do with like the whole whopper flower mimicry thing and it, I, I feel like they might purposely have done it this way for us to have that like thread to to tug at to like tickle our brains with <laughs> yo Zerf, don't you remember anything else at all the poor princess feeding the foxes I'm I'm sorry. I I have no recollection. Maybe it's because of the head trauma. I I'm not sure. I woke up and found myself covered in blood. My my things were gone, and and there was nothing to indicate who I was or or how I got there. I crawled into a cave and and settled in for a slow recovery. <laughs> After my legs and feet were a little better, my hunting skills were what kept me alive. Dad. I was so worried about you. I'm all right now, Joel. Oh, don't cry. Daddy's not going anywhere. Oh, I'm Daddy. Here to stay. Daddy, oh, no. This is good. This is good. All's well that ends well, Hook. <laughs> you know what, though? I definitely think my luck got worse after running into Benin on that mountain. I knew it. Ugh, I. I just. No, no, I just meant if it weren't for you, there's no way I ever would have run into Yozerv on a mountain this huge. Besides, we got back safely, didn't we? So don't blame yourself. Maybe sometimes miracles can only happen when you get just unlucky enough. Pallet. <laughs> when did you become such a smooth talker, huh? Ugh, Pallet, huh? disgusting. Uh, am I? I? I was just... telling the truth. Oh, yeah! I want to say thank you to to the Traveler, Uncle Cyrus, Auntie Eula, and Auntie Amber. Thanks, everyone. You all helped look after me, and I will always remember it. But I guess I can't take the snowman with me, or it'll melt once it leaves Dragonspine. Oh, it's such a shame. Oh, I can help with that. One moment. <laughs> huh? Eula? Here, take this. It's powdered rhyme. Just add it to your snowman, and it will never melt. What? Wow! Really? Oh, this is awesome! You're the best, Auntie Eula! It, for some reason, reminded me of that snowman in uh, Frozen, the Disney movie, where like he got brought back to life, or he got brought to life by Elsa's powers. Is it Elsa? Anyway, he got like there's a a snowman that got brought to life, and he's like dreaming about going to like the beach, and uh, going to like hot areas, not knowing like what happens to snowmen when they're exposed to warm weather. <laughs> Dad, I have an unmeltable snowman now. <laughs> How cool is that? Don't eat it. How can I ever repay you all? Ah, uh, we are all delighted for you, huh? Thank you all. 
Thank you, if from the bottom of my heart. Dad, I want to go move the snowman. Can we do it now, please? So God, okay. gosh darn it, I just got back. I'll okay. be leaving with Joel now. I'm sure I'll see you all another day. Very well, very well. It's time for Pallid and I to have another discussion concerning his <clears throat> breaches of adventure discipline. Yeah, give it to him, huh? Cyrus. But, but Cyrus, I think I kind of made up for my mistakes this time, you know? <laughs> see you guys! Oh, I made this for you and Amber. Think of it as a winter souvenir. Oh, are you sure? This must be really important to you. Yeah, I shall treasure it and put it in my secret areas. Come on now, just take it. No need to make such a fuss. Wow, now our snowman won't melt either. Great! Thank you, Eula. I'll treasure it. You're welcome. Just keep it. That's all I ask. I'm guessing this is a decoration we could put in the uh, teapot, even though it's like... I don't think there's like a winter scenery in um, the teapot right now. It's like mountains, um, some adeptal like teapot looking place, kind of like Madame Ping's place, uh, a real beautiful beach, and uh, like an Inazuma kind of island with like lots of like those trees with the pink leaves. <laughs> those are the three, four, four areas you can set up right now. So no like dragon spine themed place. So yeah, we, if we want to build snowmen in in our um, uh, serenity pots, we're we're gonna have to like pretend that. Well, we don't have to pretend. It's part of the lore that Eula is the one who gave us the ability to build on multiple snow and warm climates. <laughs> Amber and I have some business to attend to now. Ooh. See you later. What are you guys doing later? See you. Bye bye. <sighs> Seems like they've all got their own stuff to do now. <gasps> oh, you know what? We've been on Dragonspine all this time, and somehow Paimon still forgot to ask Albedo about how to make a fruit juicifier machine that could keep the juice fresh. Uh, oh, Paimon. Maybe we should try Timaeus again. He does seem pretty eager to please, after all. <laughs> Timaeus. He always wants us to talk to him by standing super close. Oh. Snowman torso. By standing super close to the alchemy station, so we accidentally talked to him. Uh, I guess we had to go back to Mondostat? Mondstadt. A secret born from ashes. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, I don't think this have changed. So yeah, blah, blah, blah. let's talk to Timaeus. Hey Timaeus, where's our fruit juicer? Timaeus. Timaeus! Traveler and Paimon, what can I do for you? Wait a minute. You've got that mischievous <laughs> look on your face. Oh, you're not still thinking about that ridiculous juicer thing, are you? Oh, yeah. Timaeus, oh, yeah. Will you help us? There's no us in this situation, Paimon. <laughs> I really have no stakes in this either way. No, I want to be part of this. Why do they not? Why, why won't one of them be us being like, oh, we don't have any interest in this, Paimon. And the other one be like, yeah, Timaeus, do it for Paimon. So at least it's different. The, both of these are the same. Why, what, what's the point of giving us these options if they're going to be the same? I want to be with, <laughs> be in agreement with Paimon just to like mess with Timaeus. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, I really have no stakes in either. In this either way <sighs> well if the traveler isn't really interesting then uh yeah maybe i'll give this one a pass it's just the weirdest request ever no but paimon sensetias are gonna go to waste without it hmm and the time it would take me to research something like that i could probably pick those sunsetias again ten times over new research project timaeus <laughs> we meet again Oh, Albedo, thank goodness. Uh, so the situation is, Paimon wants a machine that can turn fruit into juice and keep the juice fresh. I mean, surely it's... Majorly important, that's what it is. If you can manage to invent this, we'll never have to worry about fruit going bad ever again. That's impossible. Wait, what? Wait, what?
he came in and we saw like there was a mark on his neck and now all of a sudden the mark is not there is that like a bug or is that intentional uh wait his neck what was the flashback though was that a different what what Turning i'm so confused juice is not hard but keeping it fresh is more difficult but if you simply want to keep the fruit from rotting there are many ways to achieve this let me see your neck little beetle move your gosh darn hand <laughs> right traveler <gasps> exclamation mark exclamation mark exclamation mark it's like one of those like rub on tattoos it's like oh it fell off i gotta put another one on your neck the mark is back is this a prank <laughs> what about his neck fanfare you got pranked is there something on my neck no it's fine he's got a smug face <laughs> is he like are, are are they saying like um Oh man, this is interesting. If this is the real albedo, he's messing with us. But if this is like the fake albedo, uh, then the fake albedo has learned that uh, the there's like importance in having that mark, and it's like the way that uh, the traveler is um, telling the difference between them, and now he's uh, ha has a fake mark too. <laughs> I feel like it is just albedo messing with us though, because he has a weird sense of humor. <laughs> no. It's fine. From the look on your face, it's as if you thought I just played a practical joke on you that was in exceedingly poor taste. Oh yeah. So it was a prank. But what was the okay, flashback? You were saying, how do you stop fruit from going bad? Hold on, hold on. What was the flashback though? Was that earlier in this story, like the first part of this story? I don't understand the flashback part. Well, what were where what were they flashing back to? Oh man, I'm gonna have to have to look at that flashback to see if like it was just flashing back to like this section a little bit, or if it's like a previous part of the story. If Sucrose was there, then it would be the previous part of the story since she was there, kind of making fun of Timaeus. But I don't remember Albedo being there. We like talked to uh, Sucrose and uh, Timaeus and asked him about Paimon's juicer, and not neither of them. Uh, knows how to do it and it told us to find Albedo in Dragonspine to ask, right? So we never actually met him. So it might be even referring to the previous, previous Albedo story when we, the Dragonspine was first introduced into the game. And uh, did was there a point there where I actually haven't noticed the scar thing or the birthmark thing at that point? It's too far back, I can't remember. <laughs> if there was a uh, if there was a time when uh, Albedo didn't have the mark, which would be really interesting. It was, so this is like what I was talking about earlier, where you can't go back to play the old stories. It would be really interesting to go back to play that story again. Now that um, we're giving all these like new information, now that we we can like play that story with um, new a fresh set of eyes and like appreciate that story from a different perspective now that we got all this different information but we can't do that because those stories aren't uh repeatable oh man that kind of sucks <laughs> ah oh well i'm gonna guess that the flashback was suggesting that um oh i don't know if they're suggesting that we did meet with uh subject two i guess or the um imposter albedo even before like all of this that would be really cool i think <laughs> anyway let's continue well one way would be to bury your fruit on dragon spine where the snow never melts all year round but then Paimon won't be able to eat them you could always live on dragon spine i think flora the girl who sells like flowers has a commission where she asks you to like plant a bunch of flowers or preserve a bunch of flowers in dragon spine just to see if like how long the flower can survive for in a cold climate or something like that i don't know so i guess that the, it all kind of like goes back to that with fruits too <laughs> no no too cold for Baimon. or you can give the fruit to me and i would take it to dragon spine for you but since you don't like the cold 
You'd have to send someone else to pick them up when you want them. This is where you come in, Traveler. Suddenly sounds a lot more feasible with other people doing <laughs> all the work. Hmm. Okay then, shall we go with that idea? Fruit buried on Dragon Spine will stay fresh for much longer. However, it is also possible that the fruit will sprout and grow into fruit trees. Who knows? Maybe the next time you visit, it will have grown into an orchard. You can water the trees, add fertilizer, and when they finally bear fruit, you will have some fresh sunsetias. But then it'll also be uh, corrupted by Durin's uh, corruption blood energy magic. And then the sunsetias will turn out to be evil. <laughs> Think being a gardener is so bad. Dot 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 stairs. A gardener dot dot dot. I didn't expect Albedo to joke about this. Doesn't he care about what that mark means? Wait, what? Joke about what? What is that to do with the gardening? I feel like really. I feel like I'm not following the story a lot of the times. <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, in Chinese, a lot of these references and stuff make sense, but, like, localized to English, something gets lost in the translation, and uh, it's harder to make, like, the connections between all these things. Like, maybe uh, gardening or something in Chinese culture has something to do. Maybe there's, like, a folklore or something about gardeners who, who like, have something to do with imposters and and uh, stuff like that. I don't know. This is the thing about like culture too, where like you can tell certain stories if you know who your audi audience is, but then um, like it would work for for a specific type of demographic or a specific audience, but then it won't work as well with others because they don't have like that cultural background to understand a lot of things. But I feel like since I'm not since since this is all in English and and everything, there might actually be something lost in translation, which is I'm not like smart enough to put together these like uh, logic like like story logic flow between like all the references and all all the things. Maybe I don't know. I feel like a lot very frequently I'm like, wait, what's going on? Even though like it is unfolding in front of me. As I play it, <laughs> and now that I actually switched the English, uh, the language to English, so not only am I reading the text to understand it, I'm hearing the lines being spoken, and I'm comprehending that too. And still, I there's like a lot of points in the story where I'm like, wait, how does that lead to this? And uh, yeah, something just gets lost, and uh, maybe I'm just stupid. Maybe I'm I don't have enough like experiences. And to really like fully appreciate the story. <laughs> it bothers you, does it? Of course it bothers Paimon! They are the rarest, super duper sweetest Sunsetias ever! And they're not for you! Okay, but they're just Sunsetias. I think you're only so attached to them because you don't have much fruit of this quality in your possession. When someone's pockets are full, and their spirit is fulfilled. They don't easily fall prey to this kind of yearning. Huh? Really? I see. That makes a lot of sense. No, it doesn't. It makes absolutely no sense as to what, um... A, a secret born from ashes. Quest complete. I was saying that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, of how that... Maybe I just need to think about it a little bit more. It doesn't make a lot of sense compared to like the whole uh, birthmark albedo thing. The whole thing about um, Sensietas and uh, Paimon having the sweetest Sensietas. Like I understand what albedo is saying. Like someone who has their pockets full, like they already have what they need. Then they won't feel like... Um, if they already have what they need, then they don't feel like they need to go out and get more kind of thing. If that makes sense, like if someone has 
enough or a way to like sustain sweets and like the sweetest and sietas and know that they don't they will never run out of it then they don't they're not going to have to like put out the uh, effort to make sure to preserve the sincere, sweet super sweet sensietas that they already have and i guess that's what uh albedo is suggesting if um the they plant the sensietas in dragon spine and it grows into a garden and the garden bears fruit and those uh sensietas are just as sweet as the sensidias that it are our child children too <laughs> if that makes sense but uh, i don't understand how that relates to albedo's uh, birthmark and uh, albedo's whole story <laughs> i don't know why it took me to this screen after i finished the story but i'm guessing they want me to build one more snowman uh locate puffy snowman oh it's just the same place anyways uh i want to talk to them first hey albedo dragon spine is too cold for ordinary fruit trees to survive but if one day dragon spine did become home to gardens and orchards there would be more reasons for people to visit. Perhaps a little life is the key to attracting people. Life may exist in all kinds of unfathomable forms and in all manner of unthinkable environments. Mysterious, yet tenacious. Perhaps this is what makes life so special. Okay, what about Albedo? I feel like he just, like, has his regular lines. Or, I mean, Timaeus. Yeah, he just asks you your... Yeah, this is regular. Annoying. Where you accidentally talk to him when you actually want to craft. Star Snatched Cliff is known for its views. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should, like, go to the Genshin Impact subreddit or something and see if anyone has any ideas what's going on in this scene specifically. Well, yeah, let's actually uh, build that last snowman and uh, end things there. I really enjoyed this story. I know I like nitpicked a lot about it, and I complained a lot about some of those story points. And and in and uh, admittedly, it is like my fault for not understanding the story <laughs> more than the actual story itself. In this case, like I feel like I I'm a little bit justified when I was complaining about Raiden Shogun and Sanganomiya Kokomi story, but this one. The, the way I'm I'm uh, complaining and uh, nitpicking is it's out of endearment. Like I really like this story; it, it flowed pretty well. Whereas the way I was nitpicking and complaining about Raiden Shogun and Sanganomiya Kokomi's was more like out of uh, resentment of what's going on. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like uh, yeah, I really I really liked the characters and what they were doing and how they brought like Albedo back into the story and continued. Um, giving us information about his mysterious past except like giving us just enough for us to like want to know more like oh who's this uh rhyme doter person and why is this why does she make all these um um synthetic humans or why is she trying to make synthetic humans and how, how come she was able to make a dragon and why is the dragon now dead in this mountain like what happened like there's just so much there now <laughs> Yeah, let's build this last snowman. Uh, I only have the one head. I have this hands. Um, I think I've used each one of these. Oh, nope, I haven't used this hat yet. The Santa hat. Or the Yule, Yule hat, I think it's like specifically called. Uh, I'll give him the red scarf. It goes with his hat. And... So, I have four types of eyes, but which one have I not used? Ooh, just the rock eyes. Oh, this is a very uh, generic snowman that you see, like, very stereotypical. The eggs one is, like, the weirdest one to me. Like, did, did people actually, like, do some, like, sunny side up eggs and use them as eyes? Wouldn't, like, some, like, birds or something just eat, eat it or something? I don't know. Yeah, and the nose. I don't have any carrot noses. Is there a carrot nose I can put in the game? Isn't carrot nose like the, the stereotypical nose you put for a snowman? These two look 
pretty much exactly the same. I don't really know what the difference is. Um, what does the nose of the other ones have? Oh, that one has a carrot nose. I guess I just don't have another carrot nose. Uh, I will give him the red nose since I think none of them have red nose. <laughs> oh yeah. Now I can... I can uh, accept the last reward. Claim reward! I got a bunch of snowman parts. No, oh, I was hoping for more primo gems. I, I guess snowman parts are cool too. But yeah, this concludes this uh, entire event, which is interesting. This is also an event story, not like an actual um, in-game story that you can um, eventually get to if you started the game, playing the game today. So I don't know, like, I don't know how this works for new players. Do they just miss this story altogether? This is like one of the better stories, too. So yeah, hmm. I'm, I kind of feel lucky that, or I kind of feel appreciative that I was able to do this story. And uh, I kind of feel bad for new players who don't get to experience this story. Because this story is probably one of the better ones out of the the more recent stories lately. <laughs> I guess the Xiangling uh, Keqing ones was pretty good too in the last uh, Merriment. What was it? Moonlight Merriment? With the cooking and the uh, stove god and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. I'm just going to end things here. Hope you enjoyed. Those are my snowman army. I really like this story. And I'm really looking forward to more story. As um, new characters are being released in the next patch. I think it's 2.4 patch. We're going to see some new characters. Goro, Ito, Yunjin at some point. Maybe after 2.4. Yunjin and uh, Shenhe. Really looking forward to all that stuff. And yeah, subscribe for more, leave a like if you liked this video, and hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye. Take